Most Splash Magic in Castle Crashers travels in a straight line, with various summoning times and range. But there are two characters that possess a different kind of Splash Magic, that being the Saracen and the Bear. So instead of the splash magic we all know and love, the bear and saracen turn into literal tornadoes. This is the only magic that can be used whilst moving, and also scales with strength. So put simply, having more magic will allow the tornado to last longer, but having more strength will make it do more damage. Except the initial damage when activating the tornado scales with magic, because why not? So there are two characters in the game with this unique magic. So I guess we'll just 50-50 it. No. Nope. Both characters' tornadoes work differently. So for some reason, the bear's tornado hits more times than the Saracen's. Meaning for this run, we will be playing as the bear. So like any magic only run, the beginning part of the game sucks. One activation of my tornado uses up my entire magic bar. So we were essentially hitting the enemies for 10 damage per bar. But after beating a long and tedious home castle, we get our first two stat points, which I of course put into magic. This unlocks the animal nursery and the blacksmith, allowing us an animal orb and a new weapon. So you know we're going to maximize our magic and strength. Yeah, so we kind of stream this run at Easter time and decide to make it Easter themed. Chicken will give us a plus one to strength and defense, so it isn't all bad. This allowed us to use our tornado for a little bit longer, increasing our overall damage. But there was still one issue we couldn't avoid, and that's accidentally hitting the enemies with a melee. You see, the melee button is the same as the magic button, with the only thing separating them is a shift key. But the second attempt went a lot smoother and we made it to the war machine. As expected, this boss fight isn't that bad. The only thing we had to worry about was waiting for our magic to recharge. Apart from that, it was pretty easy to avoid the attacks and very easy to do damage. And soon after the war machine, we did hit level 5, meaning we can complete the build for the run. And there it is, the complete Easter build. Anyway, the next boss is the Barbarian boss. Yes, I will keep pronouncing it that way. Now this boss fight actually kind of worked in our favour. That's because you can only damage the front of the boss, not the back. And the boss likes to always keep turning on you, making it so you've got to run around to do damage. Well, since we had to wait for our magic to recharge, we could simply just stand back and wait. And just like that, the barbarian boss was defeated. Now, I was a little afraid at this point, since in most of our challenge runs, we've not been able to save the red princess. But it turns out that a literal tornado is stronger than these ropes, meaning we can save her and not leave her behind. Up ahead, we went against our first beefy. Beefies are kind of a problem in this run, but it turns out that this beefy wasn't the hardest enemy, since we also were in the presence of Snappy. I don't know what I ever did to Snappy, but in most of my challenge runs, he's always an issue. Up ahead, we paid our respects to Seahorse and eventually found our way to the Troll Mother. Now the Troll Mother fight was surprisingly easy. Since I become a tornado, any of the trolls that try to melee me will just get knocked back, meaning I could have all of my attention on the Troll Mother. But after getting chased by the average Seahorse fan, I ended up in the river and onto the next boss fight. So this is the catfish, where you spend 95% of the fight holding up your shield. That's because the catfish has a massive damage resistance that can only be removed during the damage phase. After using up all of our magic bar, we simply just sit there with our shield up and wait. Repeat this for about four phases and the catfish is dead. Next is tall grass fields where I had the most intense Beyblade fight. But for real, the strategy to beating the other bear is to try and use your tornado in short bursts. This would knock the bear over, not allowing him to use his tornado. In PP Shredder's cave, the cave times were honestly not that bad. My tornado didn't knock them away, so I could get quite a few hits before they jumped. And for PP Strello, well, he was his normal self. Yeah, it took about 3 seconds to break the fight. Next was Flowery Fields, where I thought the tornado was going to do well, since all the enemies are in a straight line. 
But since the tornado knocked them away, I actually couldn't really do much, relying on the Grey Knights to do the heavy lifting. And inside Wedding Crash, can you guess what the Coneheads did? Can you guess? So I simply dodged the bombs until I made it to the Conehead leader. This boss fight was kind of like every other boss fight in the early stages. We were mostly being held back by our magic bar. But what made the Conehead groom even worse is that if you can't keep him knocked down, he will run to his organ. Which meant more bombs. Yeah, this was quite an annoying fight, as I could only really get one to two magic bars worth of damage before he ran away. And of course, when I defeat the groom, I just get a god juggle. Why couldn't this have happened during the fight? The next boss of the run is the giant troll, which was quite interesting for this run. So the tornado could not reach the troll, meaning to do damage, we had to jump off of the carriage. This would allow us to get a couple hits on the troll before hitting the ground. So I made sure to have five healing potions ready just in case I needed them. But we only ended up using one, so I swiftly moved on to the Cyclops cave. Here we meet our first heavy juggles of the run. Heavyweight enemies are the hardest and most annoying to juggle, but in this run, they're actually the best. That's because they don't get knocked back like regular enemies do. Instead, they stay fairly close to my tornado, allowing me to do constant damage as if I was juggling them. And luckily for me, most of the enemies in Cyclops Fortress are heavy juggles, meaning this area is not as bad as usual. So after beating Cyclops Cave, Cyclops Bridge, and now Cyclops Fortress, I wonder which boss is next. The evil wizard of course. No, but for real, next is the Cyclops, who was extremely easy. We simply baited him into the top left corner of the screen. This made hitting him with our tornado a lot easier. In fact, it was so easy that the Cyclops decided to end himself. Eh, uh, who cares, I get to kiss the princess. Next is Industrial Castle, where well, things are not that bad. I first tried all the traps, which I always do, and juggled the enemies in the corner of the elevator. But disaster struck when I accidentally meleeed one of the enemies. But it's okay, it gave me another opportunity to first try the traps. But on our second go around, we came across a pretty big problem. And that of course, is the beefy brew. So if you are to go head on, 9 times out of 10, you're gonna lose. So our tornado wasn't going to work when fighting the brute. So I instead tried to use the enemy bombs to kill the brute instead, just like I did in my no stat insane run. And after a few bomb throws, the brute was defeated. So all we had to do was defeat the final boss of Industrial Castle. <laughs> the no. Hmm. So the Industrial Prince hit the nastiest combo I have ever seen. It was so bad in fact, that I went back and did Lava World instead. Now Lava World isn't that bad. Although the level is quite long with two boss fights, the enemies are tolerable. The only thing we really have to look out for are the fireballs. But since we can move whilst in the tornado, we can simply just avoid these. So we didn't take long until we got to the first boss, that being the volcano. Now if you've seen any of my other challenge runs, you'll know that this boss is a pain. Not because it's difficult, but because it's impossible. That's because the volcano is a gimmick boss, who can only be damaged whilst in sandwich mode, which doesn't allow us to use the tornado, which means we are forced to melee the volcano, technically failing the run. Anyway, the final boss of Lava World is the dragon, who is also awkward to fight. Just like the giant troll, we have to be in contact to do damage, whilst avoiding fire breath, a falling boulder, and even a fire demon. And what made it even worse is I had run out of healing potions, which almost cost me a restart. But I was able to clutch up and grab the first part that we'll need for the ship. The second part of the ship can be found in Industrial Castle. But on this second attempt, we did actually find out that if you attack the beefy from an angle, you can actually hit them first. This stuns them, preventing them from hitting you back. We also use this logic on the fingers, since you cannot hit them head on. But by coming at them from an angle, we are able to consistently hit them without being hit ourselves. So I'm sure nothing can go wrong now. <sighs> We 
we defeated the industrial machine, hooray, yay. But next is the fate of the industrial prince. And for once, I was on team kill. But just like doing industrial castle first, my chat was backwards. Since the vote for the prince to live actually won. Next time, prince. Next was the desert, which was surprisingly easy. Yes, yeah, so the bear's tornadoes are really effective against the scarabs. To put it simply, after hitting a scarab four times, they are meant to jump away. But if you stand too close to one, they will not do this jump. This is normally what you don't want to happen, since it's pretty easy for them to get a hit on you. But since we're in a tornado doing constant damage, we actually don't want them to move, making the scarabs one of the easiest parts of this whole run. And just to make things a little better, the royal guards are also heavy juggles, meaning we can defeat these guys easily too. But honestly, after them 20 hours, I expect nothing less. I want that princess treatment. No, not that kind. So after flying through the scarabs and royal guards, we came across the two UFO boss fights, who were honestly easy too, since they can fly low enough for our tornadoes to hit them. So yeah, extremely easy desert. In the aliens UFO, every alien is one shot. So this was a cakewalk. And after crashing the UFO ship, we made it to the Sandcastle interior. Now this is where I decided to end my first stream. So I simply just exited the game since we had a checkpoint. So when I loaded up the game for the second stream, I was met with this. So the game didn't save because I never exited to the map. Meaning I had to redo the pirate ship, desert, and alien ship. Oh boy, I do love this game. So 20 minutes later, and we are back where we left off. Now the sandcastle interior could pose a problem, since we have to fight two beefies at the same time. But I was able to come at the beefies at an angle, letting me do damage. Although it did take three healing potions just to take them down. Up ahead was sandcastle exterior, where I had my second Beyblade fight of the run. But it was finally time for the beach volleyball game, which I comfortably won 10-1. Although I kind of got carried away and didn't know when to stop. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh no, I, <laughs> no, I, I didn't get the map. Next was Flooded Temple, where we were stopped by a gate. Normally, you would have to go and defeat the corn and acquire the horn. This is what we use to get past. But the bear can actually glitch its way through the gate. Although not many people can do this. But being the Castle Crashers player that I am, I of course... Next is Marsh, where we have to fight four beefy skeletons. But these beefies don't have as much health as others, so they were quick to take down. This brought us to Troll Mother Part 2 who is the exact same as the first one, although with a few more snakes. But this fight is actually a lot easier, since we have a lot more magic and have been leveling up strength, resulting in a pretty easy mini boss. Although a not so easy boss would be the corn, simply due to the fact that the corn will not stop hitting us, resulting in a painfully slow boss fight. But it wasn't all that bad, since the corn constantly goes underground, this actually gave us time to recharge our magic, meaning we could at least do damage every time the corn appeared, but the fight still sucks. Next was Medusa, who kept making my tornado stinky. No, for real, why is my tornado green? Oh, oh, moving on. Next was Full Moon, where the enemy's weight was actually an advantage. Stove faces are the only enemies in the game that cannot be juggled which is great for this run, as our tornado doesn't knock them away. This means we can constantly do damage even after they get back up. But that's not the best part of Full Moon, because we came up with a brand new strat, something I like to call the, the Chef Strat. Here's what you wanna do. First, you wanna get a large group of people. You want to lure them over to your shed. Then, knock them in your shed and knock them in there. Wait, what's that sound? Okay, I'm back. There may have been a bit of a misunderstanding. In Castle Crashers, using the ladder, lure all of the stove faces over to the shed. Then using the tornado, 
you can knock the enemies and keep them inside the ship. And since the stove faces are heavy enemies, they will not get knocked out, allowing us to do constant damage. Next is Snow World, where the enemies are back to a light juggle, meaning our tornado isn't that effective. Although I did find that the tornado is great at breaking the ice, since it's one of the toughest things in the game. Now like the Barbarian and Corn boss fight, the Frost King has a lot of downtime. This gives us the chance to recharge our magic, something that's honestly quite useful for this fight, meaning there weren't many times that we couldn't do damage. On top of that, the tornado doesn't slip on the ice, and since it's easy to move with the tornado, we could easily avoid the falling icicles, making Bear a great character for the Frost King. So with the Frost King defeated, this leads us on to the final four bosses of the game, with the first being the Painter. Now for this boss fight, the Painter will come down and, can you guess what he does? He paints. This gives us a small damage window that we want to use all of our magic for. He will then go away, leaving you to fight the painting. Now, I originally fought the first few paintings, but I soon remembered that I actually have defense for this run, meaning I just let the paintings hit me since I could tank it. For the second phase, the painter will stay down and summon all of his paintings at once. You kinda have to dodge through the paintings to damage the painter. But the thing is, all of these paintings are one shot, and since anything that touches us takes damage, we could simply just follow the painter and kill all the paintings. So one boss down, three to go. Next is the Undead Cyclops, who is even easier. For this fight, we use all of our tornado during the damage phase, and when the groom comes out, we simply just PB ground strap. So rinse and repeat for four phases, and the fight is done. Next is the Necromancer, where things step up in challenge. So before we can even fight the boss, we have to defeat two waves of enemies. The first wave isn't that bad, since it's only regular enemies. Where things get difficult is the second wave, where we have to fight regular enemies and three beefies. And just to make things that little bit worse, is all the enemies have different weight classes, making things extremely inconsistent. This resulted in us getting trapped a lot, since it only took one enemy to knock us out of the tornado. Combine that with many bombs and aggressive beefies, and we're not in for a good time. But after a few resets, we did actually get a good run. I found that running around the arena and doing short bursts of tornado was really effective. I did this so I could target the enemies that didn't have as much health as others, which left only the beefy brute and the conehead. But I eventually defeated all of the enemies and could finally fight the necromancer, who was a pushover. Since the necromancer is a regular sized enemy, my tornado knocks him over, and just like the groom and bear before, I could just keep spamming this, effectively keeping him on the ground forever. So with the necromancer defeated, all we had to do was defeat the final boss. For the first phase, all we had to do was stand at the bottom of the screen. For some reason, on the crystal's first attack, they can't hit you if you stay at the bottom. So we were able to group all the crystals together and defeat them in one phase. For the second phase, the wizard will come down and have two different shields. One that reflects melee damage and one that reflects magic damage. Although the tornado is our splash magic, it actually deals physical damage, meaning we can only do damage during the melee bubble. For the third phase, our tornado can actually reach the wizard, despite him being in the air, so we just simply melted him. But the same can't be said for the fourth phase, since the wizard's in the air again, just a little bit higher. To combat this, I had to use my magic jump to gain height. I then was able to activate my tornado, doing small bursts of damage. I then repeated this for the fifth phase since the wizard's in the air again, which finally brought me to the final phase. During this phase, the wizard will have multiple different attacks, but by far the most popular one is his meteor attack. This makes the evil wizard an easy target, as he stays relatively still. So I found the best way to do damage is to wait for him to land, so I could get a few hits of my tornado. And after summoning enough meteors to take the dinosaurs out, the evil wizard was finally defeated. So, can you beat Castle Crashers using only the tornado? Yes, yes you can. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you 
in the next video. Goodbye.